Okay, this may be the, the hardest one for my nerves because I'm deliberately recording this while there is traffic, while there's children playing, and while there's people moving upstairs because I have a point to make. And normally I try to avoid this and it's gonna drive me insane, but it's for you. Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another episode, I guess. I wanted to talk about something that I've actually had to cover with a couple people that I've been coaching. And I realized that I haven't actually touched this topic necessarily on this channel. Before, I've been trying to encourage people to, you know, build out their vocal booth to the best quality that they possibly can. And, and I still stand by that. Your goal is to get it. Your goal is perfection, even though you'll never reach there. You're like that Greek myth guy that's always pushing the boulder up a hill. I don't remember his name, but that's basically what you're doing when it comes to the quality and the, the cleanness of the audio. You can never truly get it perfect. There's always going to be hiss. There's always going to be some hum in the cables. There's always going to be traffic. There's always going to be something. You can never get it perfect. Even if you build a bunker down in a basement, it's concrete, you're like 30 feet below, you know, you've still got some issues in, you know, electrical issues, and you still have to treat for reverb and bass. So you can never truly get it perfect. But... There is a point in which it is good enough. Now, what I mean by this is, there's no, I'm not saying that there's a point in which you can get that you no longer have to work on it. I'm, not, I'm never going to say that. There's not, it's not that there's a point in which you are pretty much good and you can take a break, but there is a point in which you can record, make money, satisfy a client, and even if it's not perfect. Um, it all comes down to a few elements, a few features, a few... See that? Footsteps. It all comes down to a few nitpicks, a, a, a few things to keep in mind. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It all depends on how quiet the outsized noise is and where it lives in the frequencies. Like say, for example, your voice, you know, is a little bit more higher, higher pitch like mine is. And so it probably, most of my spoken word, most of my clarity lives between like a thousand and 10,000 Hertz. My sibilance is, you know, much higher, but that's probably where most of my voice is. Now, if you're someone with a deeper voice, it's probably going to be lower than that. So it really depends on where the noise is. Now, if you have a higher pitched voice like I do, and the, the, most of the noise is traffic, people walking around, it's stuff outside, it's, it's more bassiness, then it's probably going to be below 100 hertz. And so I could kind of... Now, again, I, I have to stress this, you can't fix everything in EQ. And do not expect EQ and noise cleanup to be the substitute for a good voiceover space. I'm not saying that, but you can EQ some of these noises out as long as they are far enough away from where your spoken word is that it's not going to affect the clarity of your voice. If you do too much EQ and you do too much noise cleanup, you're going to have this kind of very sharp, brittle, almost robotic sound. That's something you want to avoid at all costs. But if you're able to kind of cut off a little bit of that bass and get rid of most of that noise, you're probably good. You're probably fine. Now, there, there's tons of times when it's music and it's really, really close or there's kids screaming their heads off and I can't EQ that. I can't work around that. I have to pause. I have to wait till that's over and then I can continue. But most of the time... I can talk over it. I can work around it. Another thing that you can do is if you are able to record and then silence the areas that you're not talking, even if there's noise going on throughout the whole thing and then you play it back and you can't hear the noise, 
because it's buried underneath your voice, then you're probably fine. Again, supposing that there's no reverb, there's no bassiness, there's no noise in the mic or interface noise, there's none of that. Because you're still going to have that. And this, this advice is not on that kind of issue. This is on externalities, stuff outside of your, your voiceover space, not stuff within inside of the voiceover space. Because a lot of us, we live with other people, we live in apartment complexes, we live in noisy neighborhoods, and we can't take the walls off, put you know, more insulation into the walls, extra layers of drywall. We can't do stuff like that. We have to just exist within the limitations that we're given by either the apartment complex or the people that we're living with. Now, fortunately enough, my roommate doesn't care. You know, he doesn't give a crap. <laughs> I could, you know, literally just put up, you know, a giant barrier around, if I could, around my apartment, he wouldn't care. My apartment complex would mind. They would care. But that's something that you can do, is you can work around the noises. And it really just depends on how quiet it is. And for everybody, it's kind of more or less going to be a case-by-case -case basis. Not everyone is this going to work, and not every noise and every situation is this going to work. There are going to be some times when you're going to probably just have to record when there's no one else around. Which is kind of more or less my general rule anyway, kind of what I encourage regardless, even if you can kind of EQ or just silent, put some silence and noise gate in between your, when you're actually talking to kind of remedy this. My encouragement is to always record when nothing is happening. So if you have upstairs neighbors or neighbors to, to the side or whatever, and you have kids playing out, out there, heavy traffic, you're going to have to schedule around these things. So obviously I live by a highway. So when it's really, really heavy traffic, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good ways away, but when it's really, really heavy traffic, let's say on like the weekends when everyone's heading down, you know, to the center of the city to party or whatever, not all that much happens. Not that, that much doesn't happen these days because, you know, COVID. But, you know, when it was, sure, that it would be a little bit extra rumbly, especially when it would be Mack trucks and everyone's just kind of clogged over there. It'd be something that I would kind of have to keep in mind, but it's not generally that big a deal. The only time it is is because people in my neighborhood are coming and going a lot. So I'd have trucks going by, moving in and out of the apartment complex. Then I would have to be concerned about that. And then when it's after 4 o'clock, between 4 and probably like 10 o'clock, which is a pretty big time period, it's off and on when I can record. Because that's when the kids are off school, that's when the parents are back from work, that's when people are moving around, people are getting supper, that's when people are over there having barbecues, turning on music. That's the period in which, you know, things are the loudest. And so I try to get work done before or after. But every now and then, I do have a client that is needing something now. And the best time for me to get it done, whether because I've scheduled other things around it or whatever, is in that time period. And so depending on what I'm doing, depending on what I have to record, sometimes I can get away with even if the kids are yelling, the client doesn't even notice. The client can't tell. Now, this also, also can be remedied by speaking louder, talking much, much louder. So if you're doing something that's like an audiobook or medical narration, something that's very quiet, very subtle, very soft-spoken, this is probably not going to work. Because if your voice, here's where the noise is, and your voice is here, the, the distance between noise and voice is not that much. But if you're doing a lot of character work, you're doing a lot of screaming, you're doing a lot of yelling, you're doing efforts and stuff like that, like I am, and I can turn the gain down and bring my voice up, bring my volume up, 
then that's also going to put some distance between me and the outside noise. So that is another way that you can basically remedy that, is just speak louder. And that is a very huge problem with people that just get into voiceovers. They talk too quietly. Anyway, so speaking louder may also help eliminate a lot of outside noise for you. So you might be able to EQ it. Don't go crazy. Do not go crazy and don't think that you can fix everything with EQ. I swear to God, I, you know who you are. <laughs> and, you know, work your schedule around. You know, know, know when your neighbors go to work. Know when the best times of day are. If not, then just try to speak louder. Try to make sure everything else is fine. Make sure you, your studio is still well treated. It has to be well treated. Because... This trick will not work with reverb. If we're talking about you being out there in a living room or in a bedroom that's untreated, you're going to have bounce back, you're going to have reflection, and that cannot be EQ'd out. That, that's a problem that just can't be fixed. But what can be fixed is some of the outside noise. That can be remedied. That can be fixed. And your audio, your recording quality may be good enough. And the reason I'm bringing this up is not because I want people to stop trying to have better sounding audio. It's because there's a lot of people I think are stressing too much over it. There are some people that are stressing way more than they should, and they're holding themselves back from getting coaching, from doing a demo, their first DIY demo, from really doing auditions because they don't think that it's perfect. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You should shoot for that because it's a it's a wonderful, impossible goal. But it doesn't have to be perfect. It can't be perfect. But it can be good enough. Just don't go crazy with it. Know your limitations. And this may, you may need to uh, approach a coach or you may need to ask other voice actors to review your raw audio just record something raw during the loudest noisiest time and send them the audio and ask them what they think do you think this is good enough do you th what do you think i can do most voice actors are going to be very friendly with offering help and advice the ones that aren't i don't consider them voice actors the ones that do not offer help and advice i do not consider voice actors they're kind of just in it for themselves. And yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't count that. But um, yeah, that's going to be it. Your audio may be good enough, but keep striving for better. Keep striving for better, but it may be good enough. So anyway, that's going to be it. Hope this helped on some level. I am sweating in here because it's Texas and Texas is getting hot again. Damn it. But what are you going to do? So anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Totally fine. Subscribe if you're new. Bell for notifications. And leave down in the comment section below like to see me cover any other topics, ask any questions, or if the questions are too personal, email is down below. Find it. Email me. Totally fine. And until next time, peace.